Welcome back to Newton's Law of Emotions, The Adventures of Taunton, and this time we'll be doing problems involving elevators. Look at this problem. When Taunton realizes that Carl is missing, he starts freaking out and doesn't know what to do. He decides to go up and down elevators to calm himself down. If Taunton has a mass of 90 kilograms and he brings a scale into the elevator, a little weird, uh, what will the scale read if the elevator is accelerated upward at 1.55 meters per second squared? Okay, so a lot of times students have a difficult time with these scale uh, elevator problems, but I'm going to try to simplify it as best as I can. What we will first want to do is we want to draw a free body diagram. So, what's going to happen is the scale is always going to read whatever the normal force is. Force of gravity is going to be mass times gravity, so it's going to be the mass, which is 90, gravity, which is 10, so it's going to be 900 newtons. What will the scale read if the elevator is accelerating upwards at 1.55 meters per second squared? So this, in scenario A, it's accelerating upwards, acceleration 1.55 meters per second squared. And if you can imagine, if you're in an elevator and it starts to accelerate upwards, you feel a tiny bit heavier because there's more contact between you and the elevator. So as it goes, it starts to accelerate upwards, there's going to be more of a squeeze and you feel heavier. So this should be more than 900. But how you're going to do this is you're, we're going to be just doing everything we did before. Sum of all force in the Y equals mass times acceleration in the Y. And we have two forces. Normal force minus force of gravity equals mass times acceleration in the Y. Normal force is what we're looking for. That's how much contact we have with the ground, how heavy you feel. Minus force of gravity, which is 900. The mass of Tonathan, which is 90 and the acceleration of Taunton, which is 1.55. We do a little bit of math and we get that it's going to be equal to 1,039.5 newtons. And yeah, if you try this in real life, that's what's gonna happen. If you're in an elevator and you start accelerating upwards, the scale is gonna read heavier. You can try it out. Part B, what will the scale read if the, if the elevator is accelerating downward at 1.55 meters per second squared? So this time, same scenario, except instead of accelerating upwards, we're accelerating downwards. Force of gravity is always the same. The mass times the acceleration of gravity. Force normal. And if you can imagine, if you're accelerating downwards, it's almost as if you're feeling lighter because you're almost you're like coming off the ground a little bit. Like you're accelerating downward, so then like you're almost coming off the ground a little bit. So you're not gonna have as much pressure on the ground. So the force normal should be less than the force of gravity. Again, we're gonna show the acceleration is going downward 1.55 meters per second squared. Okay? And now we're gonna do the same thing. Sum of all force in the Y equals mass times acceleration in the Y. Force normal minus force of gravity equals mass times acceleration y. Force normal is what we're looking for. That's how much contact with the ground you have. Force of gravity, 900. Mass, 90. Acceleration. This time we're going to put negative 1.55. Okay. Do a little bit of math and we get that this is going to be equal. Whoops. 90 times 1.55 times 900. Uh, 760.5 newtons. Okay, but does this help Tonathan going up and down elevators? I don't know. The elevator does dist uh, distract him from thinking about Carl, and he starts jumping up and down because he feels lighter. Okay, Tonathan, interesting. Uh, let's look at the next problem. Conceptual example. For each of the stages, will the scale, scale be greater, less, or equal to the person's weight? So when it's going with constant speed, again, constant speed means zero acceleration. So that means this will be equal to the weight. The scale will be equal because it's not accelerating up or it's not accelerating down. It's just a constant speed acceleration zero. If it's accelerating upward, again, as we notice, it's going to put a lot of pressure over here. So the normal force will be more. So it's going to read greater. Downward acceleration, again, it's like falling off. So that means there's not gonna be as much pressure, so it's gonna be less. And if it snaps and just starts accelerating downward with gravity 9.8 or 10 meters per second squared, what's it gonna read? Well, it's gonna be falling as much, so there's not gonna be any contact, so that means it's just gonna read zero, actually. Or less, I guess you could put, but it's gonna be zero. 
Okay. Eventually, Tantin runs into Charlie. Charlie owns a shady donut business in the elevator. These are the donuts. Charlie sells donuts by the Newton. Each donut has a mass of 0.8 kilograms, and Charlie uses a scale to weigh the donuts. Interesting. When should Tantin weigh the donuts to get the best deal? Okay. Well, as we talked about, whenever it's accelerating downwards, there's not going to be as much contact. So what's going to happen is the scale is going to read less than what it should be. So for Tantin to get the best deal, it should be accelerating downwards. What is the weight of one donut when the elevator starts to go down with an acceleration of two meters per second squared? Okay, again, we're gonna be doing our some mass, sum of all forces in the Y equals mass times acceleration in the Y. One donut, force of gravity. Um, I guess I would actually do this force of gravity, force normal, force normal minus force of gravity equals mass of donut times acceleration of the donut. So force normal, that's what the scale is going to read. Force of gravity is 0.8 times 10, so this is 8, is equal to 0.8 times acceleration, uh, go down with an acceleration, negative 2 meters per second. So that means this uh, normal force, it's going to read 6.4 newtons. Okay. Part C. What is the weight of one donut as the elevator travels down with a constant speed of 0.5 meters per second? So in this case, what's going to happen is, since it's not accelerating up or down, the force of gravity and force normal are going to be exactly the same. And we could try this out. Uh, we can do sum of all force in the y equals mass times acceleration in the y. We have force normal going up minus force of gravity, mass of donut times acceleration. Force normal we don't know, force of gravity is 8, the mass is 0.8, and the acceleration is 0 because it's a constant speed. So what we see now is the force normal is equal to the force of gravity, which is 8 newtons. And last part D, what is the weight of one donut when the elevator starts to go up with an acceleration of 2 meters per second squared? Okay, so same thing. Sum of all force in the Y equals mass times acceleration in the Y force normal minus force of gravity equals mass times acceleration of y force normal minus force of gravity which is 8 mass 0 0.8 uh, acceleration is going up this time too so we see that the normal force is 9.6 newtons so don't buy newtons when it's accelerating upwards don't buy donuts uh, and but what happens after this thing after Tonkin purchases a donut Charlie takes off his shades, okay, and tells him where his boxes are. Ooh, interesting. All right, let's do one last problem for this section here. The fire alarm goes off and a 97 kilogram fireman slides three meters down a pole to the ground floor in 1.2 seconds. What was the upward force exerted by the pole on the fireman? So anyway, the fireman goes down three meters. It takes him a time of 1.2 seconds and we want to know what the upward force is. So as he's going down, gravity is going to be pulling him down, but there's also going to be an upward force by the pole. I'm just going to call it force of the pole, uh, which slows him down so he doesn't just crash down to the ground. So let's kind of draw this out. Uh, force of gravity, force of pull. And let's see what we know. We know displacement in the y direction. He falls down three meters, negative three meters. Going to be starting with the initial velocity when he's on top of there with zero meters per second. And it takes him a time of 1.2 seconds. So again, what we always want to find is we want to find acceleration first. We look at our formula sheet here and we see that this formula is going to help us find that. So we do. Displacement in the y equals initial velocity t plus one half a y t squared. Negative three is equal to zero plus one half a y 1.2 squared. A y, do a little bit of math, and we get 
four. So it's gonna be accelerating downwards at negative 4.17 meters per second squared. And now we can find what this force of the pole is. Let me do this in orange. So sum of all forces in the Y is equal to mass times acceleration in the Y. And there's two forces, the force of the pole minus the force of gravity, mass of the fireman times acceleration of the fireman. Force of the pole is what we're looking for. Force of gravity is 97 times 10, so 970. Mass of the fireman is 97, and acceleration is negative 4.17. So we're gonna see that the force of the pole is gonna, we're gonna do some math here. 4.17. And we get 565.5. So 565.5, whoops, 5 newtons. Okay, what is the upward force exerted by the fireman if he just hangs on the pole? So if he just hangs on the pole, that means there's no acceleration. And if there's no acceleration, that means these two have to be equal to each other. So the force of the pole is going to be 970 newtons. It's going to be the same as the force of gravity if he just hangs there because he's not moving. Okay? Alright, thanks for watching.